Hello everyone, and in this Blender tutorial I'll be teaching you how to destroy a small shed using force fields that will be simulating a tornado. Um, so what we're basically going to be doing is we're going to be setting up a building, um, and we're going to give it a particle system of one particle each. Oops, sorry about that. Um, and this particle isn't going to move anywhere. It's just going to sit there idly. Um, so it's not, it's just going to be sitting in the center of the mesh, um, no physics or anything enabled on it, and then when the force field comes along, it's going to pick up the particle and fling it around, and we're going to use an explode modifier on each of the meshes, um, so that it actually picks up the whole mesh and not just the particle. So let's get started by building something. Um, I'm just going to create some wood planks first. So I'll just scale this down along the z-axis, maybe down to about there for now. And that'll work. Alright, let's um, rotate this 90 degrees along the y-axis. Oops. That's ry90. Move it over here, and we need to give it a particle system now. So we'll add a new one, and we'll name it Objects, and set the amount to 1, so there's only one particle, like I said before, the end frame to 1, so that it emits that one particle on that first frame, and it ends on that first frame, it stops emitting particles on that first frame. Set the lifetime to 250. Um, the problem is when a particle dies, the object doesn't disappear, it just stops moving. So it'll just stop and sit there and not go anywhere all of a sudden at frame 50, and we don't want that. So we'll set the lifetime to be to last as long as the span of the animation. And let's set the normal to zero so that it doesn't shoot the particle out. And last thing we need to change is the gravity. We need to set that to zero so it doesn't fall. So now, if we take a look at our object here, the particle just sits there when I play the animation, which is exactly what we want. Now we need to come back here and add an explode modifier. And that's all we need to do, really. Because basically what that'll do is that mesh will then follow that one particle. Typically, if I had four particles, it would break this mesh into four pieces. It would break the four faces apart. Since we only have one particle, it won't break into pieces, because that one object is the one piece. So the force fields will pick it up and treat it as one piece or one particle. And now I'm going to move this over, I think. Yeah. And I'll duplicate this, Shift-D, move it up there. Um, select those, Shift-D, rotate it along the z-axis 90 degrees. Move it right there. Select all of these, Shift-D, R, Z, 180. Move it 180 degrees along the z-axis. There. So now we have something a little basic like that. Um, I'm going to duplicate this, rotate it 90 degrees along the x-axis, move it up, and we'll make this a corner piece type thing. Move that back. Yeah, it's right about there. And duplicate this and move that down to right about there. Um, now we have a couple little support beams. There. That'll work. There, just something like that. I know this isn't accurate by building standards, I'm sure, but we just need to get something that'll look cool when it's destroyed, and at least slightly accurate. Alright, I've got those. I'm going to duplicate those. I'm just going to move them. And I'm going to uh, not select that, because we don't want it. Duplicate that, rotate it 90 degrees along the z-axis. So now we have all those. Get rid of that. Um, that. That should be a good height. Maybe not, though. Um, yeah, let's duplicate that. Move that up. I think I like that a little better. That's more shed-like not more house-like. 
All right, let's select those. Um, I was gonna say I would deselect those, but I don't have a mouse plugged in, so I don't have a middle mouse button. So select those that way. There we go. So now we have those selected, and let's just move these up and just start duplicating them, moving them upwards. I think I missed one. Yes, I did. Doesn't matter, we'll just duplicate this one. And just keep duplicating that until we reach the top. So that we have some sort of shed now. And actually, I'm going to select... You know, let me undo those last couple ones. So I would like to select these. And scale them in. Out, actually. So that they don't interfere with the rest of that. Now I'll just select all of these. All of these. All of these. And all of these. Duplicate them up. Duplicate them up. And delete that top one, because we don't need that. Okay, that'll work. I'm not going to bother with the floor, because I don't think it really matters in the end. At least not in this case. So let's add a roof now. So we have all those particle systems set up, of those objects. If we go into wireframe mode, or wireframe view, we can see them a lot better. So let's add a plane. And move it to the top. Scale it up. Just like that. And let's add a solidify modifier, the thickness of 0 0.025 meters. And let's align that as well as we can. All right, whoops. There we go. So now we have a roof of some sort, but we have to be able to destroy that too. And that one, I'm not gonna have it come out as one piece because this will break into a bunch of pieces, because it's either shingled or it's not a very stable material, so it's gonna break up. Um, so let's go in here and let's make this, let's name this particle system roof. And let's make the amount 500, and let's set the end frame to one, so it emits all 500 particles in frame one. Lifetime of 250, normal of zero, gravity of zero. So now they shouldn't move anywhere, which is accurate. And let's, actually I'm going to move that above the solidify modifier there. And let's add an explode modifier, and we're going to enable cut edges. So now it'll cut the edges to give um, a more jagged appearance. Now let's tab into edit mode here, subdivide this ten times. <laughs> so now we have a little bit more to work with. And then one other thing I typically do is I go under faces or mesh, faces, quads to tries. So I converted all the squares basically to triangles. Um, in most cases, triangles aren't a good idea to use, but in this case they are because we're not, um, well, we are animating, but we're animating the, destru the destruction of the roof, and it'll make it look more jagged that way, and it'll have more detail. If we press Alt A, nothing should happen. It's running a little slow because I'm out. If something like this happens, press tab to go into edit mode and tab to go back out, and that fixes it. And for some reason it does that, I don't know why. So let's set up the particle systems now. Not the particle systems, the force field. So we'll start with a vortex. And I'm going to set the size to 2.5 so I can actually see it. Move that right about over here. And we'll set the strength to about 2.5, I would say. All right, but if we just did this now, all of that would be affected, which we don't want. Um, we want it to affect it as it moves over there. Um, so it can't be affected once when it's all the way over there because the force field is all the way over here. We don't want it to be affected until the force field gets closer. 
So to do that, enable maximum, set the size to 2. So now it won't destroy anything until it's in that little circle around it that we just created, which is perfect. So if we press Alt A, nothing is destroyed. I'm going to move that above the Z axis. All right, so let's animate this. Let's press I, insert a keyframe there, 250, move it to about there. I, insert another keyframe. So that now if we play, should get something like this. Which is pretty cool, but it looks too uniform. Way too uniform. So we need to break it up somehow. And we're going to do that by adding a texture force field and applying a clouds texture to it. So set the strength to 2.5, enable maximum, set that to 2. Let's add a new texture, a clouds texture right there, name it variation. And let's load that texture on there. Move it over there. I'm going to set that size to 2.52 so I can see it a little easier. Insert a keyframe for location there. Keyframe 250, move it over there. Insert a keyframe for location, but I just realized that I made a mistake anyway. Let's, we have to move it up. So insert a keyframe for location there again and move it up over here and insert a keyframe for location again. There we go. All right. And so now, if we play our animation just like this, again, it's running a little slow. Apologize for that. Then it should destroy it in a much better way. Um, the pieces do just sort of fly off and it looks kind of weird. I haven't found a workaround around that yet. That's because there's no gravity enabled. Um, we could animate the gravity value, set it to be enabled at a certain time, but unfortunately if we did that, um, then all of the shed over here would just collapse, and at least some of it would still be standing when it was done. Um, so, yeah, I haven't found a way around that quite yet. But if I do find a way around it, then I'll be sure to tell you. And I think that's just about it. So... Yeah, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. It wasn't very long, at least I don't think it was. Um, and I hope you learned something from it. And I hope to see you again on the next tutorial, whether it be video or text, I haven't decided yet. So, thanks for watching, and bye.